Excellent. What's up guys and welcome to my monthly builds video for February 2017. This is a video series I do every month. At the beginning of the month I plan out usually two computer builds. These are parts lists so I'm not necessarily putting anything together for today. Uh, but I will be talking about the parts going into the builds, uh, giving you some price lists for them and some locations where you can purchase them. And if you're interested in actual builds themselves, uh, well I do those two on the channel and I will be building one of the systems I talk about today later in the month. Speaking of, uh, for January, I've actually got the January build right there and I have I haven't done the final follow-up video on that with the testing and everything, but that is coming soon. I'm still waiting for the uh, G-Skill RGB memory to arrive for that, but that should be here on Monday or Tuesday, so expect that video next week sometime. In the meantime, again, if you do want to check out some builds, uh, including that build I just did, it was a $2,800 system, although about $700 of that is one of the SSDs. So check that out. Uh, the build video came out pretty nice. Got some time lapse and all that good stuff. Uh, of course, there's fan interaction for this video as well. So I do want to hear back from you guys. So I asked you last month what you wanted to see for February, and the overwhelming answer was give us a damn Zen build already, which unfortunately I can't do. But I do hear you guys. 42% of you want that, and I do have more information coming on that. Second place winner, though, was the entry-level X99 build. Actually, a uh, follow-up to that one, too, because I did an entry-level X99 build back in 2015. Um, but here's some AMD news, just for to tease you guys a little bit more. Uh, Lisa Su, their CEO, actually talked at a briefings call, and she actually said that Ryzen will be launching early in March, in early March. So uh, hopefully within the first week or two of March. Again, we're still not totally sure. So for that, uh, what PC builds do you want to see in March? And I have a wide variety of options here. Everyone go vote on that. It is linked in the description down below. Uh, I also asked a question back in December, which was which underrepresented case manufacturer would you like to see a future build video with? Because I've mainly been working with uh, Corsair, Fractal, and uh, Bit, I'm sorry, not Bit Phoenix, uh, NZXT for kind of in the last few months of 2015. So uh, Fantex was one of the answers. And for that reason, I built the Fantex base system last month. Lian Lee was second up, actually Cooler Master really, really close within a vote or two of them. So for that reason, again, I'm going to be doing a Lian Lee uh, case-based system. But that's for the second system I'll be talking about today. First system is going to be the entry-level X99 build. And this is actually the entry-level X99 build that I did all the way back in 2015, August of 2015. And um, gosh, look at it here. Only $881 now. Um, but bear in mind, that's because two of these Two very important products here aren't available anymore. The X99 SLI uh, has a new version and the R9390X. So those aren't being included. If you added the prices of, the, of those, it would still be in the $1,200, $1,300-ish range. Uh, but I'm happy to say that for this uh, entry-level X99 build, I was able to get the price down. So uh, $1,177. And uh, again, this one that I did back in uh, August 2015 was about $1,500, as it says here up at the top, at least with the current prices at the time. Biggest question I had for this system was which CPU to use? Because if you're going X99, using X99 chipset motherboards, LGA 2011-3 is the socket, so that needs to be compatible. Uh, and there's two series of, of uh, CPUs that Intel has released. They have the uh, original Haswell E CPUs, and then they have Broadwell E that they launched more recently. So I actually wasn't sure wh whether to use the lowest end uh, Broadwell E chip, which is the 6800K, or of course the 5820K, which came out a little bit further back. Um, but I actually went and asked you guys on Twitter, and although there was, again, uh, many opinions on both sides of it, uh, the winner here was 6800K for $420. So that's what I used. Although you can get a 5820K uh, for $370, so if you do want to shave some, um, some money off, you can do that. Also, if you're just looking at CPUs that are compatible here, you will also find a bunch of Xeons, and I felt like I needed to point this out. If you really want to get in on X99, LGA 2011-3, for as cheap as possible, you can get a Xeon. Uh, and you can actually get 6-core and even 8-core Xeons for down below $300. However, all of these Xeons are pretty seriously um, um, hamstrung when it comes to their frequencies. So I was like, oh wow, you can get an 8-core Xeon for $300, bucks, but it's 1.7 gigahertz. So if you do need the cores and the threads, a Xeon is very, very viable option in this range. But my thought was the uh, 5820K and the 6800K run at, at, at just faster clock speeds out of the box, and they're over unlocked for overclocking. And if you're building a system like this, I really feel like you should overclock it. And um, I also wanted it to be at least somewhat appropriate for gaming as well. So for that reason, I ruled out the Xeons, but I do want to point out that they're there. And then again, because of the straw poll, 
I uh, went with the 6800K. So this one costs about 410 to $420 right now. Um, again, it's more expensive if you compare it to the mainstream CPUs, but it is a six core, 12 thread processor. And uh, if you want it even cheaper, if you can walk in somewhere, or if you can find a micro center that's local to you to walk into, they're selling it for 380 bucks. But again, that's in-store pricing only, so not everyone has access to that. Now these unlocked processors from Intel don't come with a, a, an air cooler or any cooler of all, at all, so I went with the Hyper 212X. Again, this is entry level, so I stuck with budget and I'm really not paying too much attention to aesthetics with this build. But for 45 bucks here, you get the Hyper 212X, which is already a very well-known uh, good cooler with direct copper heat pipe contact, but you also get an extra fan, and Cooler Master actually ships some pretty nice fans with the Hyper 212X, and these aren't the ones with the LEDs or the clear look on them either. So I thought for 45 bucks that would do a really good job. Uh, for motherboard, there's lots of X99 motherboard options around the $200 range, and I was looking at some of those, um, but then I decided to go with the ASRock X99 Extreme 4, mainly because you can get it for 160 bucks. Uh, even $140 if you include a $20 mail-in rebate. And uh, overall, not a bad board. I mean, you have uh, pretty decent cooling and power delivery for overclocking. Uh, it's got the, pretty much the feature set you'd want, including uh, Ultra M.2, tons of SATA connectivity, uh, eight DIMM slots. So you're going to get the job done here. I don't really like the blue. You know, if I'm being honest, the, the blue doesn't really match too much with anything. But again, I'm not caring about aesthetics with, with this build. I'm caring mostly about price and performance. For uh, memory, I have a 16 gig kit because you do want to take advantage of quad channel. You do still have four uh, additional DIMM slots open, so you could expand this in the future. Memory prices have gone up, unfortunately, so a four gig, a four by four gig kit is costing about 95 bucks right now. This is a DDR4 2400 memory kit uh, from G-Skill. And uh, again, it's not going to match all that great or anything, but it's going to work just fine. Uh, I also want to point out that one of the advantages of going with the 6800K instead of the uh, 5820K is that you do have support for 128 gigs of memory, um, which the 5820K does not. So that's kind of nice. For storage, I went with my kind of standard baseline configuration, which what, what I find is acceptable for storage, which is going to be a SSD first for your operating system and main programs. And I find that a 240 or 256 gig SSD will give you a little bit more space without being being too crazy expensive, and then also an additional hard drive uh, to provide mass storage since a uh, 240 gig SSD is going to fill up pretty quick. You can still get the SanDisk SSD Plus, not the fastest SATA SSD, but still quite fast and will give you the SSD responsiveness that you need for 70 bucks, and that's uh, still a pretty good price. SSD prices and uh, memory prices have been going up recently, so that kind of sucks. And then a two terabyte uh, Hitachi Death Star hard drive. This one is uh, kind of a standby, available for about 55 to 60 bucks on Amazon. That'll get you some storage. And of course, if you already have an old hard drive, one or two terabyte or four terabyte hard drive lying around, just use that and that'll save you some money. Uh, here's probably another controversial decision for this build. I went with an RX 480 and uh, I, like, I, I, I like it because it's an eight gig card. So if you are doing stuff uh, like OpenCL that you can do GPU acceleration with, you get eight gigs of uh, memory with this card. It's much more reasonably priced than some of the higher end stuff like a GTX 1070 or even like a, an R9 Fury or something like that. Those tend to be at least uh, 70, 80 bucks more expensive than this. This is an aftermarket uh, cooler done by PowerColor. It has good, good ratings across the board. Uh, so you get an 8 gig RX 480 with an aftermarket cooler. And if you include the rebate card, you can actually get it for 200 bucks at Newegg right now. So that's the same price you'd pay for a 4 gig RX 480. And it's a very good card. And uh, the other thing I'll point out is if you don't like this, that GPU configuration, a GPU is such an easy thing to upgrade uh, and swap out in the future that uh, that'll be easy to do. Uh, for a uh, case, I had also many options. I went with the Cooler Master N400. This is an ATX case, very standard. You can get it for about 50 to 60 bucks. Um, and it's got lots of ventilation. This was my main thing because they are putting some higher end hardware in here. It's got a full mesh front. Uh, with fan intakes there. It's got a fan t intake on the side. You can apply directly to uh, your graphics card if you need some more cooling there. It's got exhaust at the top as well as a rear fan. Uh, and then overall, it's a pretty well-built well, well -built case. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's gonna fit all the hardware in there. It's not gonna be the crazy fanciest case you've ever seen, but it'll get the job done. And then again, having plenty of options for ventilation, I, th I thought was very important. Finally, we need power. And for that, I went with the Seasonic S12 II. Again, this is a price to performance sort of option here. Uh, Seasonic is a very solid power supply brand. This uh, power supply has a five year warranty and very good ratings for quite some time. It's only 50 bucks. You can get $5 more off if you want. And of course the cables suck. They are uh, ketchup and mustard, but 
when we're going entry level and we don't care about aesthetics, there there's some uh, corners to be cut, and that's the one I cut. So there you go, guys. That entire build will cost you eleven hundred and seventy-seven, about twelve hundred dollars right now, not including, of course, an operating system and peripherals and stuff like that. But uh, I think that's pretty nice. I mean, you're going to get a huge amount of performance here. I'm imagining this is going to be geared more towards people who are doing uh, workstation tasks, not just gaming, but other things as well, because um, the practicality of investing in X99 only makes sense if you're actually going to do some heavy lifting with the system. Uh, so let me know what you think of that build there. Let's move on to the next one. This is a mini ITX build. It's KB Lake based, so it's a Z270 chipset motherboard, and it costs $2,200. So this is pretty high end. This is actually going to be the system that I build uh, this coming month, probably in the next couple weeks. And uh, this also, so for that reason, I also have a Lian Lee case in here. Uh, and the Lian Lee case I'm using costs $200. So. Because I'm building this system with a few external influences, such as the votes you guys did, uh, as well as using a Lian Lee case, as well as I decided I wanted it to be mini ITX. Uh, so I was looking at mini ITX Lian Lee cases, and Lian Lee cases tend to be very expensive. They're very nice, but they're very expensive. So for that reason, I'm actually giving you guys two builds uh, for the mini ITX KB Lake thing. So you get a bonus build this week. You get three total builds. Uh, so this one is going to be $2,200, and then I did a much more sensible uh, uh, version that has cost $1,200. So here's this one. We got a 7700K with a 120 millimeter closed loop cooler, the Corsair H100 IV2, EVGA Z270 Stinger, uh, Corsair Dominator Platinum Memory, and Intel 600P SSD as well as a SanDisk 1 terabyte SSD, uh, an EVGA GTX 1080, the Lian Lee Q37 Mini ITX case, uh, Corsair SFX 600 watt power supply, and then I threw in a couple Noctua fans because I don't think the <laughs> Lian Lee case for being as nice as it is comes with fans. All right, uh, so here is the power supply from the last build. I don't want to look at that. Let's look at the case first. So here's that case. Uh, this is a pretty new case, so there's not a whole lot of reviews on it yet. They should be sending this over to me, uh, and I will be taking a look and giving you guys some additional feedback on it. Uh, it's aluminum on the outside. Uh, it also has a uh, tempered glass panels that are on the front as well as the left side. Um, and a pretty cool design, I think, overall. I mean, it's it's a box design, but you have an SFX power supply, so the power supply doesn't take up quite as much room, so it's not quite as huge. Um, but yeah, I feel like this case is really designed um, for to have a 240 millimeter radiator at the top. Lots of uh, lots of dust filtration there as well. That's nice. Um, so for that reason, that's why I went with the the uh, 200 240 millimeter uh, radiator from from Corsair. All right, here's the CPU. 7700K, you guys should be familiar with this highest end mainstream KB Lake processor. Um, that's what I felt was suitable for this build. Uh, an H100, I H100 IV2, um, if you're going to drop a hundred bucks on a closed loop TPU cooler, in my opinion, you better be using the top end CPU from at least the platform that you're working on. So that's why I went with 7700K. Originally I was gonna do this with a 7600K, hence why I did this the second build. Uh, for the motherboard, you guys may be happy to know that I have not done any RGB requirements for this, and in fact, I'm using the EVGA Z270 Stinger, which doesn't have RGB at all on it. Praise praise the Lord. Uh, this one is a little bit harder to find right now, but you can get it directly from the EVGA website for 170 bucks. Uh, there's a couple other places that had it listed, but um, stock was uh, a little, little little up in the air right now, so um, if you can't find it now, hopefully they'll get more of those coming in soon. Uh, for memory, I went with a 32 gig kit because there's only two dim slots, but I wanted to have lots of memory, this being a higher end build over $2,000. Uh, of course, our Dominator Platinum is kind of black and silver, which is the color scheme that I think that is going uh, with for this build. Uh, it has white LEDs, no RGB, just white. Uh, and it's, it's very fast memory. Uh, for an SSD, I have the 600P. This is an NVMe SSD from Intel. It's definitely not nearly as fast as the higher end NVMe SSDs, but it is much less expensive. So for this one, you can get a 512 for $175 which may or may not be worth the cost. Again, um, if you don't want to spend that much on storage, check out my other builds where I have a more sensible configuration. I also added a SanDisk Ultra 2, because when you work with a system that has all SSD storage, you get kind of used to not having hard drive noise or anything like that. 960 gigs though, this one's $250. So again, I'm spending a good amount of money on storage for this build and you could get by with less, but I think this is gonna be very fast and uh, also taking advantage of some of the newer technology on the platform. Uh, you also have the GTX 1080 in here, with an EVGA card, it'll match up nicely with that Stinger motherboard. And um, I may have a different card than this that I use for the build itself, but um, uh, that remains to be seen. We'll 
We'll talk about that later. Um, this is the 1088 gig. It's the super clock version, so it's got white LEDs on it. And yeah, awesome. It'll, it's, it's a good card. Uh, and then we need a, a small form factor power supply, a SFX power supply to be specific, not ATX. This is a 600 watt version from Corsair. Um, it's, it's a nice little guy. I've seen this at some of the trade shows that they've had it on display at. It's got all black cabling. Uh, very nice minimalist sort of uh, when it comes to the stickers and everything. Not that you're going to be able to see that in this case. But the cabling, I, I did think, would be important, uh, keeping that all black. Now, finally, there are two 80 millimeter fan mounts here at the back of the case. You can probably see them there on the right side. Uh, so kind of a different fan configuration, but since it didn't seem like there was a lot of active intake uh, as far as fans from this case, I decided to throw in a couple uh, of these Noctua Redux fans. These are the 1200 RPM ones, so they'll be a little quieter. Uh, they have, uh, again, a nice color scheme. They're, they're sort of silver or... or kind of gray with a darker gray. So it's gonna it's gonna match with everything else there. 18 bucks each. They're not too a fans, you know, they, they tend to be more expensive. But um, yeah, all that'll come together to get to hopefully build a, make a very nice $2,200 ish system. But again, if that's a little bit too rich for your blood, you can uh, sacrifice a little bit on performance and still get a very, very solid build for about $1,200. So this is my bonus build. I'm not gonna go through all the parts in this one like I did uh, with, the, with the one we just went over, but uh, $1,179 is its whole price right now, at least if you're buying in the US and uh, getting the cheapest price, prices on PC Part Picker. I dropped the 7700K down to a 7600. Uh, I included a uh, air cooler, a low profile one from uh, Be Quiet. You actually don't need low profile for the case I chose, the Core V1 from Thermaltake, but um, it'll. It, I kept things smaller in here so there's just more room in the case and, and you can work with it a little bit easier. That's only about 40 bucks. Again, same motherboard, EVGA Z270 Stinger. I think it's a pretty good deal for an overclocking board for $170. Uh, went with a 16 gig kit instead of 32, and that significantly reduces the cost of the memory. Did go with low pro profile memory here with the Vengeance LPX, so it'll fit under that cooler. Uh, OCC Tryon 150 uh, SSD. The prices for SSDs are going up, but you can still get 480 gigs for $130. This used to, this was 120 bucks like a week or two ago, but uh, there you have it. And then uh, GTX 1070, the Zotac Mini one. So again, you'll have plenty of space in there. And again, the Thermaltake Core V1 Mini ITX case. And in a Seasonic power supply, 550 watt, 80 plus gold, semi-modular. Again, this one has a uh, pretty nice all black cabling. So there you have it. Uh, less than $1,200 for a very solid Mini ITX, nice, low, small footprint uh, mini build for gaming and whatever else the heck you want to do with it. Anyway, guys, that is all for my January... No, this February. That's all for my February builds video. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Of course, as always, I love to hear your feedback. I love to hear your ideas for how you might change and manipulate the parts and swap a thing out here or a thing in there to make things less expensive. Just bear in mind, whenever you're building a system, there's always requirements, and you got to meet those requirements first and then see how you can fit everything else within the budget, the size, compatibility. So that's why I do these videos. I hope you guys enjoy them and uh, get a little bit out of them. Stay tuned for my follow-up video on that system that I build right back behind me. Uh, that should be up in another week, week and a half. And then, of course, I have this build, uh, the one in the Lian Lee case coming up soon as well. So uh, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you want to see more tech videos just like this one, and we'll see you next time.